Welcome, listeners, to another episode of the show. I am your host with the most, Chris Talks. Hope that you're having a wonderful day because I am definitely having a wonderful one. Yes, welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome all my new listeners and old listeners. All right, so let's get into today's top topic, which is going to be, let's see, well said, let's see, let's see, Uh, a missing mouth. A missing Malvernon teen found safe in Michigan with a convicted sex offender. Whew. Wow. Bruh. Yeah, I know. I know, I know, I know, I know. All right. Um, as always, we're going to let Sarah AR report the story, and then I'm going to give you my view and my opinion. All right. Um. Ed, oh, sorry, 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 all my listeners. Ed, what's up? Welcome. Thank you for being here. I'll be forgetting you sometime, bro. I'll be forgetting you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. (laughs) All right, we're going to let Sarah AI uh, report this story. All right, let's get right into it. Hit it, Ed. A 14-year-old girl from Mount Vernon, missing for nearly a month was found safe in Michigan on Thursday. The teenager was discovered with 30-year-old Keith Frierkson, a man previously convicted of possessing child pornography in 2017. According to Fox News Digital, the investigation into her disappearance led authorities to examine rideshare service records, revealing that the teen likely used such a service on January 5 to meet with Frierkson. A specific ride linked to Frierkson's address in South Haven, Michigan, was identified, aiding law enforcement in locating the girl. Frierkson is now facing charges of second-degree kidnapping for transporting the teenager across state lines. First-degree criminal sexual assault, failure to register as a sex offender, and contributing to the delinquency of minors. These developments highlight the dangerous potential of online platforms to facilitate inappropriate contact between minors and adults. The Mount Vernon Police Department, in collaboration with federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies, played a critical role in the safe recovery of the teenager. LT, Dave Shackleton expressed gratitude towards all involved parties, particularly praising the efforts of the Van Buren County Sheriff's Office. The teen's mother had tirelessly worked to find her daughter, raising awareness through posting flyers and speaking to media about her daughter's likely communication with Frierkson via social media. She speculated that her daughter had interacted with Frierkson through Omegle, a platform known for randomly pairing users in chat sessions, which reportedly shut down in November. This case underscores the importance of vigilance in monitoring online interactions and the critical role of law enforcement in extending their reach beyond jurisdictional boundaries to ensure the safety of missing individuals. Man, that was a crazy one. That was definitely a crazy one. Um, where does this episode bring us again? M- Mal Vernon? Yeah, Mal Vernon. So this is in New York, right? Yeah. Oh uh, no, Mal Vernon is Mal Vernon is Westchester County. Okay, so this is Westchester County, but it's right next to to um, New York. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is definitely uh, a crazy one. Hit my horn so I can get my point of view. All right, some people y'all might hate me, but. Please understand what I'm trying to say. Some of my listeners, you might hate me real quick, but please understand what I'm trying to say. We got some, you said we got video. All right, we got video, but let me get my um, input real quick and then we can hit the video. All right. All right. So first and foremost, I would want to to address um, the mother. I would want to address the parent in this situation. And the reason why I would address the parent now, ladies and gentlemen, please understand, this is just my view and my opinion. The reason why I would address the parent is because at this point in time, okay, where we are in society, ladies and gentlemen, we know that such people as pedophiles exist. Now, a lot of people probably blame the, um, the, uh, the, uh, what is it called? The site or the app because they didn't put up enough parental protection or whatever, whatever. But 
ladies and gentlemen, on these sites and on certain cellular phones, they have parental controls. Sorry about that. I hit the wire. We could probably edit that out, right? Yeah, probably. But on these sites, they have these things. They have these parental controls. They have certain things in order to prevent your children from going on to certain sites. Okay? And um, for me, the mom should have turned these things on. They also have apps where... Um, I guess like you you could sit there and you could tell what kind of uh platforms that your child is on, how much time that they're spending on it. And to me this this mother should have been monitoring that. And maybe maybe the situation could have been prevented. Now, as far as the girl Oh no, we gotta get yeah, so let's before we go into the girl, give the mom the dummy buzzer. <laughs> So now we get into the girl as far as she's concerned. Okay. Now I don't want to go um, as far as saying kids will be kids, but she's a kid. Okay. And as a parent, and this is where I said this fallbacks on, on the parent to me as a parent, Bruh. she should have been teaching her daughter to be wary of such things now ladies and gentlemen to all my listeners th- th- this is what i would recommend th- this would be for me if your children don't know these people they shouldn't be adding these people let me clear my throat <clears throat> yes but if these children don't know these people they shouldn't be adding them on they don't know them okay Teach your children to meet people within the traditional way. I understand social media is a big thing. Yeah, so what? So what? You're their first teachers. You, you know, they don't always have to be on social media, always uh, meeting different people on social media, even the ones who engage in such things as promoting entertainment and they getting likes and the because you got some girls out there uh some guys out there teenagers that they do their little thing on tiktok and the parents they allow this but parents 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 i'm talking to you if you are going to allow your child to be on certain sites let them know Let them know, okay? And you yourself must also be wary because some teens, you know, like my nieces and nephews, you know, they're stubborn. Bruh. Yeah. They're they're stubborn. They don't listen. You tell them not to go on it and they'll go right on it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, all my listeners, if you're a parent, or if you have nieces and nephews, you, you, you've you been through the situation. So you know what it is. So let's just be more vigilant as parents. I, I've talked about this in other shows about um, children being kidnapped, how easy um, it is and how, uh, yeah, yeah, how easy it is. And that sometimes how uh, uh, easy the access is to them, how they prey, like literally prey on looking only for teenage girls. Now, you have some sites, yes, um, some sites, there's like an age. You have to have a certain age to be on certain sites. Yeah, you have to, a certain age. Now, this um, this particular site that uh, they're talking about, which was shut down was more of a um it was a meeting site you know more meeting dating whatever you want to call it it was one of those sites to where you would meet people now me i would question why my daughter was on a site like that i'm sure some of my listeners will question that if you don't 
You should. If you're a parent, you're one of my listeners and you're a parent, check this, the, the type of sites that your uh, children are on. Look at their phones. Why not? Why not see what they're doing? You are supposed to protect them. Let's be honest. The sites, the websites and stuff, they're not, according to some people, they're not doing their job. They're not doing their job to protect these teens. In fact, they are promoting a lot of the material to teens. Just to teens. Come on now, parents, you know that. Let's be honest. These are these uh, corporate... uh, yeah, these are these corporations. These are their marketing strategies to where they put stuff and blow it out to, uh, to children. Come on. What, what what was that drink that they used to call? What they call it? A thotty? I think that's what they call it, right? A thotty or something. Colorful. To promote to kids. Okay? I remember they had those um, colorful cigarettes or something like that. I think that was in the early 2000s. They had... Uh, some type of cigarette, colorful cigarette packs to promote to children, to promote to teens. And this woman, in my opinion, this parent, was not monitoring her daughter, her child, on social media. But not just that, she did not educate her, her child on the dangers of of social media because just like your child goes on um these teen sites because i i i think if i believe this yeah they have teen sites and all this other stuff they have different sites different apps all that stuff you know they have all that stuff but these people prey on teens and they form teen accounts they put up fake pictures i mean Adults, parents, again, again, let's be honest. You see it on the social media platforms that you're on, if you're on them. But, well, you're on this one because you're listening to me. So if you're um, one of my uh, followers from Facebook or Instagram, definitely they put up all this fake stuff. You got uh, girls posting up pictures half naked picture of themselves and they got uh, uh, 2,000 followers. They only got three pictures or four pictures up there. You only looked at it one time because you said she looked good. That's all you did. That's to the males. That's to the males. I'm just saying. I'm keeping it 100. Bruh. To the females, same thing. Bruh. That's what you did. Other than that, you don't really go and view that person. You don't really check up on them. You don't see what they're doing. But these teens, they're out there. They're doing the same exact thing. They're trying to meet people. That's like you go, what's that? What was that one? That um, that you was talking about? That BLK, whatever, whatever. Yeah. You got... Uh, teens posing as de- adults. What's the other one? The one that you told me before. Yeah, what you tag, 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 tagging, tag. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I, I'm not on any type of dating uh, apps uh, as far as that concern. That's concerned. But yes, you have teens that go on these sites and pose as adults and you have adults that go on these sites and pose as teens now what i can say is this as far as the monitoring and this is what i say about all these sites this is what i try to explain the sites can only do but so much it is the person that is clicking the button it's it's the, the site is not clicking it for them The site might be producing the content. And that is where, to me, you can hold these corporations uh, accountable. But the person is still clicking on it. The person, when you listen to this show, you clicked on this show 
to hear the show and listen to the show. Nobody else. You did. You knew what was on it. Bruh. And this young girl, she did what she did. And let's let's give um a round of applause. Please, I forgot to acknowledge them. But to the police department, the Mount Vernon Police Department. Also the uh the Michigan Police Department. Let's just give a round of applause to every department that was involved. Everybody that was involved. Because this is actually um a good story. It's kind of a sad story, but it's a good it has a good ending because this young girl 14 year old girl was returned home but again they're both at fault the mother should have been monitoring her child more and to all the parents out there monitor what your child is doing online if you are allowing them to be online pay attention because if they're not being wary of it or if you're not informing them of it at least you know you know that there's sexual predators online. You may not know how they do what they do, but you know that they're there. You know they're there. Message. So let's just be more cautious of uh, what we let our children uh, uh, view and listen to as far as social media is concerned. You probably can't control all of it, but whatever you can, you know, do. Now, this girl fell victim to this, this sexual uh, predator. And this man was already convicted of this crime. Now, this is what I would say about that. Our rehabilitation system in these prisons, okay, can, can we do it, please? Yeah, that's what they get. They got to get the dummy buzzer because this man went to prison for this situation, had to register as a sex offender, failed to register as a sex offender. By the grace of God, they caught up to him. But not before he already had another victim. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think we should do about a system like that? What do you think that we should do? Leave it in the comments and let me know what you think we should do. But what do you think we should do about this type of situation that happens on a daily basis? This happens on a daily basis. I don't really like to discuss these type of situations, but yes, I want to put it out there because it happens on a daily basis and there are creeps like this out there. Okay, they are creeps, creeps like this out there. I said it once and I'll say it again. People, we have got to do better. We have got to do better with the monitoring of social media. We have got to do better with our children. We have got to be more involved. For those parents who are not, I would say and I would advise you. To get more involved. It doesn't matter if your child don't want you there. That's not important. Be there. Be more involved. Get more involved. Watch the content that they are uh, watching on social media. And when they're not around. If you can. Which there are ways. Like I said. There's apps out there. You can still monitor the content that they're watching. So. You know, they might try to sneak something in while you're not there. But you can still monitor it. Because nine times out of ten parents, you're paying the phone bill. You're paying for the phone. That's what you're doing. You're paying for the phone. And to all my low-income listeners, if you got the the Obama, still you can monitor it. You can still monitor it. You can still do it. You know what I'm saying? It's, there's no excuse. Get more involved. All right, so um, we got some video on this real quick. So uh, let's hit the video on uh, this particular story real quick. 
Let's get into that. Van Buren County Sheriff says there needs to be a call for change telling us that a registered sex offender was able to make contact with and groom a minor across the country online. The Van Buren County Sheriff's Office says it got a call from the FBI Wednesday regarding a suspect wanted in connection to a missing girl in Washington. Police went to the property along Blue Star Highway with a search warrant. It was there they found the victim along with the car Frierkson used to drive her from Washington. Investigators say people who also lived on the property told them she had been there for about three weeks. The sheriff says this is a reminder about the dangers for teens online. We've all heard the conversation for years about something's got to be done, but yet nothing's getting done. You can censor certain individuals on any internet platform. Tell me why there can't be legislation coming out of Washington, D.C. Once you're convicted of a sex crime, you have zero access to an internet, certain platforms. And if they do get on it, let the prosecutor and law enforcement have something they can sink their teeth in to, to prosecute these individuals. Police say that Frierickson befriended this girl on social media, grooming her for several months. Frierickson will face charges in both Washington and Michigan, and he could be facing federal charges as well. Right now, he's being held without bond. Live in Van Buren County, I'm Jeremiah. All right, so uh, first and foremost, uh, let's give that sheriff a round of applause. Let's give the sheriff of that county a round of applause because he is absolutely right. At what point do we get to where we are policing what happens on social media at what point is the government going past any any if any type of legislation to help with these situations at what point does that happen at what point you got to understand how many kids go missing in this situation this child was found but in a lot of situations that is not the case that's not the case at all a lot of children go missing and are not found over 20,000 children I've reported this before over 20,000 children go missing every year just in the United States okay over a hundred okay no matter of fact what what was it over two hundred and fifty thousand kids go missing every year and that's just reported so you can imagine how many are missing that's not reported so i'm grateful that the cops caught this guy and that he'll be doing time for uh for kidnapping um wait um uh, i also have a further video of the mother so we're gonna play that real quick of the mother's uh let's just play it hit it this predator was able to use social media platforms to reach my child from across the country he was able to use these platforms to groom my child over an extended period of time how many more children have to be victimized before these social media platforms are held to a higher standard. How many more families have to suffer? Now, hearing the mom, just hearing the mom, I'm pretty sure some of my listeners could relate to what she's saying, and I can too. But at the same time, as I said before, we still have to monitor what our kids are doing online. Now, how many kids must suffer I have to deal with this, these type of situations. In certain cases, it will depend on the parent. It will depend on the parent and them monitoring what their child is doing on social media. Because ladies and gentlemen, again, like I said, this parent should have been more focused on what her child was doing. Now, us here at the uh, Chris Talk Show, me and the staff, we are sorry for that this happened to this young woman. But justice has been served. Okay? And this man is facing up to life in prison for what he did. Just off the kidnapping, 
he's facing life in prison. So at least it has somewhat of a happy ending. But this girl, she's going to need a lot of therapy. She's probably going to be messed up for a few years. But with, I guess with therapy, when she gets it, if she gets it, um, it will help her overcome uh, this tragedy. All right. So that's my view. And that's my opinion on this on this particular topic. All right, as always, if you like this content and want to hear more of it, y'all already know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like, hit those notifications, and feel free to leave a content because you know I want to hear from everybody. Uh, as always, I want to thank all my loose my listeners for tuning in. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you are here with me, and I so so appreciate that. Until next episode, stay blessed and not stressed. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Until next episode, y'all. Peace out.